We're going to go ahead and wait one more minute, guys, and then we're going to go ahead and kick it off. Again, we're going to start talking a little bit about SOC Prime. The agenda for today, we'll be really talking about SOC Prime. Nick's going to show us how to use our community version and show us kind of some tips and tricks of the solution. We're going to walk through just kind of finding some of the general resources in the product. We're going to walk through um, some of our detection code. We're going to talk about Sigma, which is really the, the core behind what makes SOC Prime tick, um, and show you some of the um, functionality and features in both the community version and our enterprise version. So hopefully this will be a great session for everyone. And I ask for all your forgiveness today. I'm working off of a single screen. No so problem. Bear with me as I am doing all that stuff. No, that's why I'm here to help kind of navigate this for the audience and kind of, you know, get us through, get us through where we're going. Let's see how we're doing here. I see chat. It looks like we got some participants. Questions. Looks good. Again, guys, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to drop them down live. We will have a session at the end. We'll try to answer those. I will also try to monitor that. I have a, a monitor, uh, um, uh, somebody helping me doing production who will send questions to us as well. So we'll try to get to those as we go or at the end. And if you're watching this recorded later on, feel free to comment and you know, reach out. Um, the SOC Prime team is very happy to follow up and answer any questions for anyone out there. With that being said, let's go ahead and start off. So happy new year, Nick. It is 2023. Um, pretty exciting. I don't know how, how what your what your thoughts are in 2023 and what we uh, see coming down the pipe. Oh, this is exciting for SOC Prime for sure. We got some new products coming out here soon. Can't talk about those today, but that is uh, new and exciting. Been doing a lot of stuff with uh, MISA, Microsoft Intelligence. Uh, That's right. Association. Doing a lot of work with them. That's right. You were down at a conference in, in Miami recently. That must have been tough down in Miami recently. Yeah, it, it was it was rough, but I made it. I made it through it. Excellent. It's funny you mentioned Microsoft. I'll just drop, I think we'll drop in the chat, guys. Um, there is a, a case study from Microsoft using SOC Prime with one of our partners, Qzara. And the headline there is, you know, with SOC Prime saved over 600 hours in manpower. And, and when you think about manpower, this isn't, you know, hold the stop sign manpower. This is a, you know, threat intelligence manpower <laughs> hours. Yeah. yeah. So very, very expensive hours. Um, and I think it's a great reference to kind of what we're doing. And I think for the audience here, I think this is probably the biggest value, whether you are a SOC Prime community user, if you haven't signed up already, I encourage you to become a community user because it's absolutely free. Or if you're an enterprise or on-demand customer, you get great value out of SOC Prime because we help you save time and time is money. It's probably more, more money than it ever has been before. I mean, you've got you know a lot of uncertainty, you've got recession pending, um, you've got war going on in Europe. Um, and unfortunately, when things like this happen, bad actors do more bad acting, right? I know you're showing right now for the audience. Um, you want to talk about this real quickly? You're pulling up SOC Prime and kind of giving us a, a snapshot of the Yeah, recent... I just wanted to make sure I was on the right page. Sure, I got sure. two accounts open. So I'm going to be showcasing community. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to get into some of the enterprise features as well and, and what differentiates the two. Excellent. I know, like I said, talking to some of the our current community customers, they were talking about tips and tricks on how they use the product. One that you mentioned to me when I first started, which I thought was really interesting, you said when you were using SOC Prime before and you were just getting just using the, the free version, was you use it as a central point to put together kind of an info report for a CISO or a, a senior executive. And you're, you gave me the example of someone comes in and says, hey, the, the XYZ exploit happened. Nick, what do you know about that? You could log into SOC Prime and I'm gonna exaggerate here, and it's minutes put together kind of an executive report for people. Can you talk a little bit about that and show how our audience could do something like that? Yeah. So for something like that, I'll, I'll rewind just a little bit. Just so this is the SOC Prime landing page. So we're within the community account. This is what it's going to look like when you first log in. So forgive And me if for you haven't, go to SOCPrime.com. You should be on the ability to sign in or log in. Go ahead and fill it out. The only thing you have to remember, you have to have a domain that cannot be a Yahoo or Gmail. It has to be a corporate domain. That's how we're going to know who you are and how we're going to be able to manage and give you content. Excellent. All right. So from the landing page, you have a couple of options. If there's a, a tactical need and somebody was, you know, breathing down your neck a few minutes ago about what are we doing about XYZ uh, vulnerability or exploit, go over here to the upper left-hand corner and use content search. That's going to bring you to the search utility within advanced search. Just a time-saving feature there. Let's say. Uh, so, for example, Nick, you could be a sales guy like me, and somebody yeah. says X Y Z exploit, and I could come in here, put it in the search engine, and just get a brief kind of English explanation of what it is. If really? there's if there is evidence in the wild of an attack, yeah, there's a pretty good chance that we're going to have something on here within a day or two. 
That's awesome. And this is one of the reasons I'll tell you that we're seeing more and more people just using SOC Prime. Um, a lot of our, our partners in the system integrator community like it because it's a great reference, a tool they can bring in. Um, again, there's nothing they're installing in this. Um, you can just sign up and get access is just right now, just free, great information. Yeah, I got one here. So you have the log J4, okay. And you're doing a different one now, Raspberry. Robin. Oh, there we go. Sounds like a pie. Yep. So we have got plenty so of tips on that. So I'm here within the community edition. Uh -huh. Right. First thing I want to do after I drop in uh, a string of characters that I am concerned about, either CVE uh, name that they're using, an APT group, whatever that happens to be, I'm going to come over here to the left hand side, go to available for me. Okay. That's the first thing that I would do if I'm using the community edition for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here we can see right off the bat, we've got, without paying a dime, just signing up, uh, getting a community account. You've got three detections for this. And all three are from threat bounty contributors. So these are folks that are contributing to the Sigma project. Sigma is a universal way of describing what is occurring in a cyber attack mm -hmm. in generic terms. And then it is translated through our, our software to whatever... Uh, SIM, EDR, data analytics platform that you happen to be using. Uh, we even work with, uh, say, PowerShell. And uh, if you're storing things locally, if you're using uh, Elk Stack, uh -huh. those are some of the, you know, if you're staying completely community and you're going uh, small budget, you know, yep. speed, low drag, you can go with that. And can I ask something real quickly? You said available for me. What does yeah. that mean? And did you preset something or is something preset that that's only for you? Like what made that only for you available for no, me? So this is because you have a, a, in this account, this is a community account. Yep. Uh, there is a waiting time that our, our paying clients or enterprise clients get an expedited uh, availability of our content. On the community side, there is a, a paywall or a buffer for some of the content and some of it is published just immediately to market. I guess, I guess what I'm, I'm wondering is, does this, when I click that button, it knows that my environment would, would be open to this queries, right? Like it knows that I'm either using Splunk or I'm using the no, log source. Not it does not. not yeah. necessarily. Okay. That would be within a search profile. That's okay. done right here. Um, so what I'm trying to get to is what I'm kind of curious then is if I come in and I remember when you set up a profile, you can tell it, Hey, I use, I use Splunk. I use a little bit of Microsoft as well. My N, my EDR is a uh, CrowdStrike or whatever it might be. I can put in those pieces and then it'll help make the search more customized for me, right? To what I would be more relevant correct. to. Is that correct? And that's correct. available in, in the, in the um, community version. It is. So if you follow this uh, onboarding wizard, yeah, that's then what it was. Okay. come over here to uh, search profile. That's where you would fill this out. Awesome. Awesome. And that's a, that's an excellent, I know an advanced feature that is in the um, on-demand paid version is again, you, you can then set up many profiles for your enterprise, right? So you might have a guy who just focuses on endpoint and that way, when he comes in, he's only going to find endpoint intelligence that he's going to be focusing on the code or the threat hunting for, right? You have another guy who's focused on the log source. So it's a nice way to be able to, to segregate duties. So here, Sorry I'm going to break stacking. your, that's okay. No worries. I'm going to start stacking some of my uh, filters here. And let's say we're going to, we're going to leverage uh, Microsoft products. So, so we're real quickly there, you have a platform list there and you have 52 platforms. That's pretty yeah. cool. There's quite a few in there. We we don't like to say no to folks. All right. So now we have. Wow. Okay. I'm actually going to, I did the classic rule for getting to erase my filters. So let's do that. All right. So now I'm going to recommit that. All right. So within. Within Sentinel and available for me, you have 4,000 pieces of content that you can go and start looking into. Okay, let's say we want to get a How little How is more it? Are oh. these sorted by relativity or, or, or recency or what's their sort right now? Recommended? So these people I see that. recommended. So okay. we can go by released. We can go by updated. This would be somebody released something a year ago. Um, Threat Actor has changed their tactics, techniques, and procedures. We've updated the code. There's been a new syntax, something like that. That's that, really cool. I can see right here on this one, this was a 2019 piece that was just updated recently. It looks like in January. That's very cool. It's updated today. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
Um, we also have smoking guns. This is anything with a severity of high or critical, excuse me. I know we're going a little bit off topic here. So smoking gun, if, I, if I'm looking at this as, hey, this would be bad, can I use this smoking gun in a hunting exercise then, Nick, to hunt to see if I've got this yeah, in my environment? Yeah, you certainly could. If you, had, um, if you were just looking for things that are, are generally speaking going to be bad if you found them in anybody's environment, you know, generally speaking, these would be a good place to start. If you really didn't have a good idea of what you were going to start threat hunting for and you're just starting out, it's not uh, it's not the best way to do it, but it's certainly viable. Just come in here to smoking guns, start figuring out what some of these detections are. That's going to give you a better picture of uh, how adversaries are going to be attacking your environment. Oh, and I just hit reload. Okay. <laughs> I also don't have my mouse, so I'm extra, extra hobble today. So I know we hit, we just hit one of the paywalls of community. Um, I wanted to get into more expert filters, but those are... Those are cut off. Great. We do have actors. So let's say, oh, you know, I do have some. We could get a little bit further, but I don't have all of those available. All right. And so just for we, the audience, again, in the community version, a lot of content is free. We do have a paywall where you either have to use your premium content download per month, or you will pay to buy more downloads from the system. And that's basically how we're able to finance getting this great content to you, you know, paying bounties to these uh, threat uh, threat hunters and intelligence guys putting these Sigma rules together. Okay, so we didn't have anything for Cobalt Strike. So I'm getting pretty granular here. I'm trying to find the limit so we can show you. Sure, sure. So in that well, let's go back at a high level then. Start with one of those one of those um, items. You can click on whichever one you want and kind of show some of the reporting capabilities and the information that's collected here. Okay, so when we initially uh, select a piece of content, we met with this intelligence page. Okay, so now this one, I'm going to expand some of this a little bit here. Okay, so we're we're given a timeline, pretty high level, with some links provided, some MITRE attack tagging, and which technique uh, this query is looking for. Excellent. Now when we get into code, we're going to be met with the Sigma code and that universal way of describing what is occurring. And now, because I had selected Sentinel before, it's going to pull that up automatically. Gotcha. So real quickly oh. for me, the intelligence tab is giving me all the stuff that if I want to read and dig into. Sigma is kind of putting it in one, one readable, referenceable. Page. Yeah, I would, turn, I would turn here first. Um, yep. The intelligence page Again, it's going to give you the timeline, links down in here, all very mm -hmm. helpful, um, helping guide you with uh, what technique is being used. Then when we come in here to Sigma, you're getting, again, more references. So I definitely recommend checking these out. And again, high level, like what is it that we're looking for? This one happens to be a, a fairly lengthy one. But this is looking for something that is generally useful in threat hunting regardless of which network or which environment you're in. Very cool. Very powerful. Very simple as well. These can be, so in my walk, the, these type of references and information like this was very useful in transferring knowledge to say somebody that wasn't, uh, was, a, was a, a layman, I guess. I don't mm -hmm. want to say exactly that, but they're not going to know all the technical jargon. It doesn't really matter to them. They want to know what you're up to and why. And if it's, reducing risk if it's on target, things like that. Um, it helps paint a picture and tell a story. So Nick, could you could you ultimately copy cut and paste this out? You make a few edits, you know, make a basic report to your your management team and say, look, you know, suspicious Java child process point. Here's the risk factors. You know, here's here are the your references findings. to it. Right. Yeah. And then I'm assuming, again, you, depending on who it is, they might go, great. Now what do we do? Right? Do we how do we detect it and how do we know if it's already in here? Can you talk to how we how we go from there? Yeah, well, if this was if you started looking, say you got a hit on this, mm -hmm. you could start looking at uh, similar tactics, you know, similar techniques. Excuse me. Um, I would if you got a hit on one of these and you knew it wasn't something known and authorized, I would uh, initiate incident response and get them involved. 
they would also find the platform uh, quite useful because it's going to help guide them determining if there's compromise elsewhere. And you kind of just get the ball rolling from there. Maybe there is a, a certain threat actor that you are concerned about uh, targeting your organization that is known to use this TTP. Mm -hmm. You would then take that threat actor's name, drop it in and start hunting for the similar activity or, or other things that they do. See if they're so, further down the kill chain than you would have so thought. Two things you said to me, instant response team should have access to community as well. They don't need to have, be buying content, but they use community because after you sell them, hey, this, this is this alert, they're going to need to take action. And this by using sure. community, they can go in there and see what the action or the references to are, at, are there. Yeah, there, there may be something in their subject matter expertise that they want to go and look for like, hey, because we saw this, now I'm going to start looking for these things. Okay. Well, now I see on your other, your, in your screen here, you got choose four, and you got these other names underneath Sigma. So let's say I, I am concerned about this and I'm using Elastic and I'm using, I don't know, FireEye. What do I do now? I go to Elastic. Okay. So you've got a query here. Can you talk a little bit about what this is? Yeah. So this is what your SIM EDR data analytics platform is going to actually this digest and understand. We have some options here. Again, we're going to hit a paywall with custom field mapping. That's not an option within community. Um, but with a little bit of tribal knowledge and know-how, you can easily get this to work. Um, if you have to do a find and replace with Notepad++, that is a always a viable workaround. We have custom field mapping features that I can show you when we get into the enterprise side of things that address this. And so real kind of tip and trick here, guys. You can see what it is you need. You can, have the, you can see the, the code you want. And if you wanted to, you could copy, cut, and paste, and like Nick's saying, do some ugly scripting probably to make it work. Or if you're using our on-demand version, we've got the tools and tips and tricks to help you do the custom mapping. And we'll show that to you in a moment, right? So yep. again, that's another one of those value adds that I, that I, when I'm talking to customers of Sock Prime, we're helping save you time, right? It's going to take you time to manually do this. If you have Sock Prime, the amount of money you spend is pays itself back the ROI is there because you're going to get this faster and be, be more efficient. Because you can also, and Nick, another quick question here, you're showing this to me at Elastic, and if I wanted to deploy it on, let's say I'm running two SIMs, or I wanted to deploy my endpoint, it's all one piece of, it, it's multiple pieces of code, but it's only one download from SOC Prime, right? Correct. So you would, if you chose this piece of content, and you used a, a premium Sigma to get this piece of content, um, getting access to this page counts as one. You can deploy it to Sentinel, you can deploy it to Chronicle, Elastic, Splunk, whatever. As long as it's in this, it's this piece of content, it yep. only counts as one. That's awesome. That's really, really powerful. It's another, I think, uh, important value prop because I, you know, talking to many customers, it seems like nobody's using one uh, ubiquitous tool across the endpoint and the SIM. You know, it's always they have, they have something here and something there and something there. And they need to have detection yeah. code on all three. And then there's different processes for how they deploy detection code. I think we're talking about this more in the, enterprise version on how we can automate rule creation. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but that's another tip and trick I think is very important. And again, it's that I have a rule, I can automatically have it rolled out. Again, saving me time, money, process. All right, so let's jump into uh, enterprise. Sound good? Sounds great. And when we do, when we go into enterprise, you're gonna talk a little about how we can do some threat hunting next, I think, correct? Yep, give me one second. So I'm gonna check our questions, see from the audience, if we got anything coming in here, any, good, any feedback. Hopefully this is again, good, overview i'm hoping that many of you are already using community and you're kind of seeing this and go yeah i remember doing this or that's how i'm using this um if you have questions please drop those down we're going to move into kind of the enterprise version that has a little more functionality i will make a mention of where these functionalities and features are and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about threat hunting some of the automation functionality and uh see where else we get to explore as we move on right here we go can you guys see me I can. So Nick, right. I noticed you brought this up before. This is a dashboard. I know this dashboard's new too. I know community users, if you just started using it, um, I guess in the last, did this start in January maybe? But this is a new dashboard, correct? Yeah, this is only a couple of weeks old. I think this started early January. Um, so we've got some some recommendations here. I always use the, con I use the platform in two main approaches, selecting content and then implementing it. Mm -hmm. So for this one, this is giving us some, some points on latest vulnerabilities. Um, help, again, helping guide you to selecting content. Some log sources. This is built on my search profile that I've built. This is my account that I use every day. So it's saying, hey, based on your log sources that you've told us you have, here's what we recommend. 
threat actors. So real quickly for the audience, what this means is for our enterprise customers, you might have five people using SOC Prime in an enterprise. But for Nick, when he logs in, it's for him. It's his profile. It's set up for what he searches. This is, and that's why I saw Nick, you're ranked number one, by the way. So I saw up there. Um, so that's another thing. You, the users get some feedback of their use. They're more familiar. Their searches are all here in their dashboard. Is that correct? Yep. This is built on the account profile that you build when you uh, make an account. So like here, industry, this is going to uh, get determined by your email domain and some uh, software that we have as well that predicts that. And this is what is relevant in your particular industry. So I think mine is set at tech right now. Um, and we talked about IR teams before, some CERT toolkit to help these folks. All right, so one of the things that I that I like most about the platform is, with the focus of time saving and efficiencies, things like that, when, when you know what you're looking for, it's pretty straightforward and easy. Mm -hmm. It's the times that you don't have it that it's like, all right, now what? Now what do I do? What should be on my radar? For that, I enable my eh, – it doesn't really matter. I don't have to have my search profile on um, I come over here to proactive exploit detection. Could also call this it is a use threat. case. Is this built in use case or did you develop this yourself? This is built in. So Excellent. this is over on the left hand side. You can find this within advanced search mm -hmm. and use case proactive exploit detection. And here is what is new and emerging. Uh, this is a curated list from our uh, research and development team, their subject matter expertise influences this, as well as what's trending among your peers on the platform. So if there's a whole bunch of uh, users on the platform are looking for a specific piece of content, we're going to look into is why is this so popular? Oh, this is trending elsewhere. Let's boost it and get it in front of more people. Same thing here. You could uh, filter within new and emerging threats or proactive exploit detection based on these filters mm. or you could say let's uh let's narrow it down by tactics this is one of the features that wasn't available in community so a much more granular ability to filter within what should be on my radar so now we're looking at what should be on my radar in the realm of privilege escalation which is often what a uh Determiner for insider threat, is that correct? Somebody's inside. Yeah, somebody, right. somebody elevating privileges that they ought not be is a definitely a sign of bad stuff going on. Um, let's see. Let's look for – we're done with privilege escalation. Let's go into exfiltration. Data leaving the system in the kill chain, right? That's the end, correct? <laughs> yeah, we wanna, we're catching them in the act of doing it. Yeah. All right, so this is just for what's new and emerging. So how does this play out in somebody's day-to-day -day life? Like I block out time in my calendar every day to come in here and look at um, proactive exploit detection, new and emerging threats. I also do the same. We're going to jump into one other aspect of the platform here real quick. We're talking about so saving. Let, let me just ask, if I'm the audience, sure. I'm going to ask, so Nick, why are you doing the proactive one every day and not the others? So this is one of the severals that I'm doing. Okay. okay. I want to see when I wake up first thing, log in, you know, checking my email, checking whatever. Part of yeah. my routine is logging into the SOC Prime platform and seeing what's new, like what is new right now? Mm -hmm. What's new and emerging? What is what can I proactively search for? You know, we're proactively looking for exploits. Um Let's see what else we got here. I was going to go into Quick Hunt next. These two kind of go in tandem. We're going to start with, you know, let's start with uh, Uncoder CTI real quickly. And for the audience, this is one that I um, I think is another great time saver. Um, I know I've worked with SOC teams in the past who've dealt with IOCs like it's a massive headache. It's normally dumped on someone's desk and it takes a lot of time to deal with. And um, I think we save a little bit of time here. So for demonstration purposes, uh, normally you go to any OSINT platform, anywhere that you're getting uh, IOCs that are, are fresh and new. In this instance, this came out of our work with uh, CERT UA. So what do we have? You can just drop a giant wall of text in here. 
we could go on to alien fall but i think it's i'm on a, a wireless connection or a, a hotspot connection right now so i don't want to push it so we have all of these iocs we have hashes domains urls and ips and i want to generate a query real quick for this one I'm so real quickly for the audience you dropped all that code in there and i can see it's telling me down there 20 hashes eight domains three urls one ip pulled all that out of that data for me then you put the yep. button and it's creating these these queries for me yep huge time saving measure uh don't got to worry about syntax um you know you you didn't capitalize something you forgot a comma let's say i want to run this in one query number of iocs per query i hit generate now it's going to do one I was going to ask you that. Like, why would someone not want it all in one query? I'll say they have limited resources and okay, it's too much for their machine to handle. Or they want to uh, break it up into chunks and run it throughout the day. Or it could be a, a number of reasons. Okay. Are they also used in, in threat hunting then? Because it'd be I'm going to do a threat hunting exercise and I don't want to overwhelm a, a system. Or yeah. so if you're if you're looking at this from like a, a pyramid of pain type of things like. IOCs and of information like that is kind of low on that pyramid, but you can just because it's low in the pyramid doesn't mean it's not important. Yeah. Um, if you got a hit on something like this, you could then say this was associated with APT twenty eight. Which for the for the audience, I have no idea who APT twenty eight is. So that's a, that's a <laughs> Russian threat actor group. And what I love that too is because as you put it in there, I did see it pre-populate that for me. So again, I can learn that, which I think is awesome about this uh, this solution. So now we're going by, so we've got recommended content. Let's go with released. Very cool. Okay, so we went from hunt, hunting IOCs to, okay, now we're going to look for their behavior. These things are a little more harder and abstract to detect than say a traditional SIM rule. People ask like, oh, why don't I just turn on all the rules? It doesn't always work like that. Let's go into quick hunt. It's another time-saving measure. This is another curated list. I'm going to use Microsoft as an example. Forgive my crowded screen. I don't know how to get rid of this Zoom banner. Um, I actually don't see the Zoom banner. So oh, good. Okay. I was worried about that for a second. All right. So this is another curated list. And... You can apply all the same things that you had before in advanced search, like your um, your platform, custom field mapping, all those other things, except this, when you hit hunt, it is going to launch, oh, because I have a defender for endpoint, excuse me. It's going to launch cool. that tab. You know, I don't want to show any of our data on a recording, so I'm going to close that out. But it preloads the query. Um, into the URL, leverages your local single sign-on. So you, however you established your session for that day, that's how you're going to connect. We're not storing your credentials in here or anything like that. You already have your SIM open. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, again, this is another thing. I block out time on my calendar. Say, all right, I'm going to do all, I'm going to hunt for all the applicable content that was released for today, one bite at a time. This is expediting. Say you have some, some teammates that are, are that are newer and you're getting them familiarized with the concepts of threat hunting, things like that. But they're also mm -hmm. they have other, other duties and tasks that take them away. This helps kind of get them to the fight quicker. Again, we're so not you could assign these, set these up and then they, they would run them. Is that you fair? necessarily like assign them within the platform user? Okay. To use. It's a good feature request idea. Um, but you could say, Hey, team member A, I want you to go and hunt the following links or hey it's monday so you you've got quick hunt today you go and hunt everything for quick hunt today this helps this can help in like in a manager's duties mm -hmm. um, helping guide their analysts and threat hunters to to the next objective um sometimes like now what is a big question like all right, what do we do now like spontaneously starting up and figuring out the next thing to do isn't always easy and this helps a lot all of the I see the first one was already hunted. So that means that's already been run and there's a, are there results from that or? That's because I just ran that just okay, now. Sorry. And um, I closed it out before. I didn't want to open up any of our data. I got you. Okay. So we can come in here to content and see the same exact stuff that we had before from advanced search. Quick hunt is just an expedited day of getting, 
expedited way of getting to the point. All that same stuff is still here. Got our timeline detection. Excellent. Here's when it came out in the media, came out on the 13th, right up by Fortinet. Looks like there's two of them. Here's the threat bounty contributor that wrote this. Um, have some Sigma categories here. Always nice to. How often, yep. Nick, do the media portions get updated, do you think? And is that our team that's updating that? You know, I'm not sure who, who keeps track of this. I know the intelligence page is largely author determined. Um, they, I think they have every incentive to get these things. If they, This is how they get their royalties for it. Yep. So if it doesn't <clears throat> pass muster, they don't get their cut. And uh, filling out all these is, is part of that, I believe. Excellent. All right. So now let's get into some of our other features here. And these are some of my other favorites. Again, well, so I know I want to make sure we, for time's sake, touch on a little bit of the automation, right? So of the automation of rules and some of the auto, um, analytics as well. Yeah, we can definitely dive into that. Okay, go for it. So one last thing, we'll, we'll go to go to the MITRE attack coverage dashboard, and then we're going to get into automation. So let's see here. Let me grab one. Where is mine? Sorry, I've got this buried here. There we go. All right, so MITRE attack coverage dashboard. What is this? Why is this important? This is another way of selecting content and then getting one step closer to implementing it into production in your environment. We're looking at it now through the lens of MITRE attack framework. Okay, this is a representation, this spider graph of all of the content that's available within the platform and showing how it's been used within the frame of reference of this search profile. So if, okay. you're, in, if you're an MSSP MDR, you could maybe create one of these for every one of your clients. Um, different locations may have different log sources, different needs, things like that. So it's all, all hinging on that search profile. Very important that you fill those out. Mm -hmm. I use this as a gap analysis tool. Hey, you, I'm looking at this. Here I can see what content I have explored. Um, explored more. means clicked on and, and assumed read, correct? Just like opened up the intelligence page. Mm -hmm. um, went in and looked at it. Marked manually as deployed. That is an option within the code itself. I'll show you that here in a bit. And then uh, downloaded via API through our continuous content management. So as I'm looking at this, it looks like we have a gap in exfiltration. I'm just going to drill down right into that. So now we have left tactics. We've gone into techniques. Here it's going to show us what we've explored. It. Within, within this technique, what have we explored, downloaded, and marked it forward? Let's go to automated exfiltration. Okay, there's nothing here under unexplored yet. All right. Exfiltration over web service. All right. There's 19 pieces that are yet to be explored. This is going to bring us right to those 19 pieces of content, knowing that it's relevant to us because it's all based on that search profile we filled out. All right. So Very that, cool. That's how I you, see. I see on the platform side, it's already yeah. got CrowdStrike, Microsoft, ArcSight all highlighted. And that goes back to your profile, correct? Yes. So it didn't Excellent. load it here, but you yep. can see all of its parameters are here. Got it. All right, so now let's get into automation. So now that you pulled that up, that stuff would show in the MITRE attack is being explored? Yes. The content, got it. And then you could manually click on deployed or use the API. Correct. So everything in automation starts with building a content list. Pretty straightforward. Give it a name. Select uh, whether you want it to be a static list. Static list is things that you enter in manually, one by one, or dynamic, meaning anytime a piece of content is added, we're going to say 28 webinar. That's it. That's a dynamic list. Okay, so now every time I a piece of content comes out that is tagged with APT28, it's going to be added to my list. 
and I'm going to get an email notification. From there, I can take this list, tether it to a job. In this example, we'll use uh, Microsoft Sentinel. The name, content type, we're looking for rules. Yeah, we'll pick an environment. An environment is simply a uh, location, um, branch office, what, any environment that you want to configure that you want to automatically deploy content to, you would fill that out in there. Pretty straightforward. Hit the little gearbox if you haven't already done that within your onboarding process. This could be Pick a geographical tag as well, like East Coast, West Coast, data center. If you laid them out like that, certainly you could. Okay. Um, so we are going to say GPT-28 webinar. I've had it in here somewhere. Here we go. Preset. You know, these can be very important. This is a lot of that pre-production work. You want to do as much of this in the platform as you can. And let's say here, how long the rule is looking back for, um, how, fre how frequently you want it ran, severity, is it enabled, is it disabled? You want to stay with a certain naming convention. Um, filters. Come in here, you can... This is where you start getting into some of the custom field mapping as well. That is a, a topic that can take up quite a bit of time all on its own. So we'll... Uh, and just and just for the audience, what we're showing here too are the advanced features. This is in the enterprise version. Um, when you're an enterprise customer, you're not just given this and, and told to run on your own. You get somebody's time who's going to help you and, and walk you through this and educate you and use best practices. And you know, there's others in the community who are doing some of this. So you're not inventing the wheel from scratch. Fair to say, Nick? Yep, definitely. All right, so that is automation. It varies. Right now, that is only available in the following platforms. Let me come back over to here. And let me, before you go into that, so the, the automation there is I'm basically able to take a list that could be keying off of anything. But in your example, it was a specific threat actor. So yes. as a threat actor creates more and more content that I want to be aware of, it comes into a list. That list could then be fed into my system where as I see new um, threats coming in and I'm a, I'm trying to think what a Sentinel user, I would have that content coming in automatically into the system or does it go into approval process? It's all depending on how you configure it. So I okay. like to have things sent in disabled and yep. then your detection engineer would do the, the final tuning, apply the tribal knowledge that only they have. Like we, yep. we write it into the greatest possible audience. So we can't, we certainly don't, exclude or replace uh, detection engineers, but we enable them and empower them, make make one of them capable of doing much more than they would be otherwise. And they would say, uh, deploy it to a dev environment, yep. apply the final tuning, and then push it out into production is a very common approach. And the reason I wanted to mention that is I, I want to make people understand we're not saying this is an automated system where Sockpine finds, finds content and pushes it out to your SIM and your SIM starts firing. That's never going to happen unless by some chance you set it up that way, which I don't know why you would. We're setting it up so the content's automated. So like you said, you have a human that sits there and goes, yep, here's our process. Let's get it deployed. And then they're able to take action with it. But we're automating the curation of that intelligence, taking Sigma so it's available in the multiple platforms or formats you need it in, and then can automatically be put into your process for an approval that you need. And that saves a lot of time because if you don't have this, right, you're probably going to do some research on several different websites. You're probably then going into the editor of the product that you have and you're writing a, a detection rule for it or detection query. Once you have it, you have to test it, make sure it works. Once you've got all that done, then you got to take that same concept to another platform in your enterprise. So if you have to do it for Sentinel, then you got to do it for CrowdStrike. So again, major value prop is once you get that automation done once, you're saving a lot of time and therefore a lot of money. Fair? Very fair. So now once we're into the uh, the daily operation and we want to kind of track what we've been up to and let, let that inform our next move. Here within Dashboard, we've got some uh, helpful little widgets here. We'll start in the upper, uh, upper left here. It starts with techniques addressed, um, tools addressed, and then actors over here on the right. This is just a, a culmination of the three. Um, but you can help help yourself by just narrowing this list down. You're like, all right, I'm, 
I've got some time on my hands. I know I got, I should be doing something, but I'm not sure what. I'm going to go and see what, what tools um, I have not hunted for yet. Not covered. All right, we'll start. However, Actually, you Nick, how many of our customers people? actually get all those circles complete to 100%? I'm assuming none. Right? There's always more work to be done. Is that fair or am I wrong? Yeah, it's going to, it's never going to be complete because the threat bounty contributors are always making new content. There's always new attack tools coming out. And you'll see, like, if we, to further explain, when we come over here to MITRE attack coverage and I come back to this. Where's my here go? I'm on vacation this week, so I've got I've developed some gaps in what I've explored. I'm Explore, usually yep. poking around and, and opening up just about everything that I see. And now it's like, hey, there's some stuff that came out and you've got some work to do. Go push and it, go pull that gap back in. And what I want to try to, you know, as we're coming up almost at 45 minutes, um, is that Again, if you're not already out there using SOC Prime community, you should, because you can, again, have a little piece of understanding what's going on. Every day, see a little bit more of what's going on. I think someone said, you know, every day, here's a circle of knowledge, and every day, here's your ability of what you know, and realize what you know might grow every day, but what you don't know is growing even more every day. And yeah. that's really what this is reemphasizing, is that, you know, you might come in and see, okay, I've explored 500 pieces of information. Tomorrow, there might be 5,000 but you can continue to chip and learn and educate and be more efficient. And again, having a dashboard where you can see that, also having all the content in one place, it's a great repository. And I hope, again, if you haven't already, please log in, use SOC Prime community and look at some of the upgrade functionality, some of the advanced functionality, I think will save you time and is worth the investment. I'm gonna pause, Nick, let's see. Um, I don't wanna cut you off. I don't think at least do you wanna oh, go somewhere okay. else after this. I wanna check for questions from the audience real quickly here. See where we're going on time. And again, appreciate everything we're, we're going here. Real, just again, to reemphasize for the audience, we talked a little bit about a report. And again, the idea there is you can come into SOC Prime, you can do a quick search in the search feature on whatever the, the, it might be, and then put together a quick FYI report. You can copy some of those links out there. Um, you can even take the Sigma that, that uh, Nick showed you, use that as part of your report. Just give you a quick everyday report of what's going on. We went over the IOC list and how you can quickly you know, pull IOCs together, make queries, and use that in different places in your enterprise. That might be something you do once a week, maybe something you do every day, but again, some value add that you get out of SOC Prime. Um, the quick hunt capability, really great looking at that, how you can run hunts, how you can use those hunts, we can hit on that a little bit, and then went into the automation. Hope as you're seeing this, again, there's more tips and tricks, again, how you can shortcut, save some time, be more efficient, and really learn. I want to emphasize, um, we're not stressing the uh, the threat detection as much because again, the threat detection is part of that bounty we pull in um, and we give it to you in Sigma, but it really is the processes we put around that so you, you're able to use that threat detection fast, more efficiently and more platforms. Um, Nick, anything else we should kind of hit on as we, we kind of close? No, not that I can think of. I think we, we covered our bases pretty well for comparing uh, community to enterprise and the the limitations and strengths of both. Absolutely. In fact, what I'd encourage you, if you're watching this live or if you're uh, watching recorded, please reach out. Um, we probably will do, uh, there definitely will be more sessions in the future, um, but we're also happy to do kind of a one-on-one -on -one or smaller uh, session with a smaller community if you'd like to, um, to go in more detail of how you can use community, how you can use some of the on-demand. Um, what we didn't show you today, again, in our community version, you do get access to premium content. Um, one, one thing we can show with you later on is sitting down and helping you select, hey, what premium content should I be using first? What would I get the most bang for my buck? Um, I know I've talked to Nick about, he uses a tool every day. I encourage you out there, log in every day, try community, do some searches, get more aware. As Nick pointed out at the end there with the dashboard, do a little exploring every day, right? Maybe explore five different pieces of content, learn a little bit more. And if you're trying to learn, you know, create a search profile that as you're exploring content, it's something you wanna learn on, right? Maybe it's exploits, maybe it's a, a data exfiltration. Uh, but a lot of great information there. Um, let me see here. Um, do quick hunts count against your paid subscription was one of the question. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. So you would get two quick hunts uh, per month. And great question. Great question from the audience. Uh, I don't see any other questions right Oh, Hold on, hold on. Is there a way to get raw data from quick hunts, Nick? I'm not so sure. What do you mean from that? Um, is there a way to get the, okay, is there a way to get the raw data from the quick hunts? 
You mean like the actual query itself? Yeah, if you go into, I, I think I know what the gentleman is getting at. Um, if you hit content within Quick Hunt and then go to whatever platform it is that you're working with, you can get the actual query there. So I guess, for example, if I ran a Quick Hunt and I found there's logs that I want to have access to and they're in a Splunk repository, I could see at those logs, I guess is where the question would be, right? That's the raw data. I think his question was more along the lines of like the actual query itself. He wants to see the, the query okay. prior. Um, so we'll that, see this follow up, but the answer, what you're saying is yes, you can see the query through the raw data yeah. query. Um, can you yeah, see the logs would probably be dependent on your permissions and the access of the data, the data repository. The query well, answer is I what get? I was asking for, thanks. He's good. Excellent. 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 Thank you. Well, guys, we really do look forward to your uh, comments and feedback. Um, if you have tips and tricks that you're doing and using with Sock Prime, we'd love to have you share those in the future. Um, if you want to do it anonymously, you can reach out to the team. We can set something up, um, but always like to hear back from the community. And again, thank everybody for their time today. Hope you have a wonderful day. Nick, hope you stay safe and, and dodge some snow today. Really appreciate your time. Um, everybody Anytime, else, brother. thank you. Thank you guys very, very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye.